honorable delegations. Um, representing Ethicas Foundation, we appreciate the opportunity to intervene in the plenary today. Throughout this first week, civil society has been closely following the negotiations and has used opportunities to engage with delegates at various occasions. Still, and despite our exchanges, I would like to once again highlight our particular concerns about the latest draft of the Convention. A narrow scope um, of the whole Convention to cyber-dependent crimes specifically defined and included in this text is necessary. Any broader application gives rise to the danger that the Convention will be used to criminalize legitimate online expression, which is likely to create discriminatory impacts and deepen gender inequality. To include um, a language or specific provisions against excessive criminalization to ensure that security researchers, whistleblowers, journalists, and human rights defenders are not prosecuted for their legitimate activities and that other public interest activities are protected. To strengthen data protection and international human rights standards throughout the entire convention is required. This means removing references to domestic standards and including the principles of non-discrimination, legality, legitimate purpose, necessity, and proportionality, as well as introducing explicit references to safeguards, such as prior judicial authorization for, ac for accessing or sharing data, as well as for conducting cross-border investigations and cooperation in accordance with the rule of law, a right to notification as soon as investigations allow, and the right to effective remedy. The two are connected, and one makes no sense without the other. Finally, um, to mainstream gender across the Convention so as to ensure the Convention is not used to undermine people's human rights on the basis of gender. Furthermore, to limit the scope of application of procedural measures and international cooperation to cyber-dependent crimes established in the criminalization chapter of the Convention in order not to undermine trust, insecure communications, and infringe on international human rights standards. And finally, Madam Chair, avoiding um, endorsing any surveillance provisions that can be abused to undermine cybersecurity and encryption so as not to allow for excessive information sharing for law enforcement cooperation beyond the scope of specific um, criminal investigations. Madam Chair, the final outcome of the treaty negotiation process should only be deemed accessible if it effectively incorporates strong and meaningful safeguards to protect human rights, ensures legal clarity for fairness and due process, and fosters international cooperation under the rule of law. I thank you very much.